So we have to mouse over on this. So we already know how to do that. It's not very complicated for us. We just go over to, let's see, the country's GeoJSON. There's already, we already have a mouse over going with this layer set style. So all we have to do is also print out some information there. So we can just pretty much just copy out what we have here. Change that, and the current layer, where is it? Here it is. So when the layer gets its set style, um, we when the layer gets its set style, we're also going to give it the exact same information. And when it mouses out, we are going to make it blank. So there's a potential problem here. We will see what that is. So first of all, let's see if, it, uh, if it's working. So we got our toggle. Look at that. Shows it on the sidebar as we're mousing over them. So that's kind of fun. And uh, one potential problem is that we could select, and then we mouse over, and now Armenia is still selected, but nothing is currently there. And of course, we could change that by having like a change that in a couple ways. We could make the select when they mouse over, always go back to the first option, or we could, you know, um, have this also change with the mouse over. There's a lot of ways to interconnect them. I'm just going to go something easy, and I'm going to make the country select just pick the the value of the the empty value. So now when we go do this, select our country, Argentina, now we mouse over, it goes back to no country selected. Do it again, mouse over. Great. So that's a little more tight. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's do a little bit, I kind of want to know how many earthquakes are happening in this polygon. So that's a little more complicated. I want to do a little bit of messing around with the actual map data, and it's a little bit mathematical as well. So first we have to maybe check, we're going to have to get a list of all the earthquakes, which is not a big deal, we already have that. And then I want to have it when the user mouses over this, it calculates out of all the current um, earthquakes, how many are inside the polygon area or the multi area that we moused over. So obviously a lot of them are not going to have any, like right here, Brazil doesn't have any, or a bunch of other countries around here, most of Africa, in fact all of Africa doesn't have any. And there's maybe some, but these probably won't be caught as actually being in Russia because the polygon is just to the coast. So really we're just talking about a few countries that we're going to be able to test this on. But it's enough for a test, and that's the important part for us. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to use a little bit more of that turf library that we used previously. And we're also going to do uh, just some interesting stuff here. So when we mouse over, we have to get a list of all the points. And then we have to do some kind of search that's going to show us which points are inside which polygons. Okay, So there's something, so they allow you to basically give um, a bunch of searches with this turf inside. And actually, this is no longer needed. There's If we just look up turf directly, it has a points in polygon, points within polygon method here. So we can give it a bunch of points and then a polygon, and see which ones wind up inside. There's a little bit of formatting that has to go on here. You can see the multiple arrays. Uh, that, you know, if you have a multi-polygon, it may uh, sometimes require a little bit of reformatting, or you might get lucky. Um, but we're going to basically remake this. So we have to make like a list of coordinates, and then a list of coordinates for the polygon, and then do a search, and be able to find out how many are inside. Okay, so let's get started with this. We already have turf installed, I believe. We've already loaded it in here, so we can pretty much just go straight to using this. So what we're going to need to do is when the earthquakes come back, we have this JSON. So let's look again at our earthquakes day GeoJSON. So it's about what we'd expect. There's all this uh, information about them in here. Uh, but we really just want like the coordinates. We want like a list of the coordinates. You can see here the coordinates actually contain three uh, things, and that's uh, when they contain three, the third one is elevation, generally. Um, I mean, I've never seen it be anything else. So uh, you just have to be careful if you do any manipulation of coordinates that you're aware of that third element. But basically, we just want these ones in a little array like that. 
So we can check just purely how many are inside. We can, we can also set up, and we will set up, um, things to get a little bit more information about those points afterwards. So for now, why don't we make um, basically a points array that's just going to save all those points so we can check it easily. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say var earthquake points array. We'll just give it that. So now when this comes back, we're going to do another, uh, something similar to what we did here with our JSON features, but we're not going to make it into a list like that. Instead, we're going to add to our new array. So our new array is, again, earthquake points array. And I'm going to push into it for every feature. I'm going to push the feature.geometry.coordinates. And let's double check that's right. So it'll be a feature dot, uh, let's see, geometry here dot coordinates, and that'll give us an array. And that array has a third item. Now, I don't know if that's going to be okay, but uh, why don't we give it a shot, and we'll see. So there we go. So now when we, whenever we're ready to do our mouse over stuff, assuming this is loaded and it has some uh, data in it, then we'll be able to pass it in this to get a little information with our turf function. So I'm going to put here, let's see, we got our earthquake points array, so I'm going to say, uh, just like the example here, var points equals well, turf.points, oops, turf.points, earthquake points. Again, that's an array of array coordinates. So it's just like this, an array with all these array coordinates, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. And then the polygon is going to be from this particular feature. So uh, in this case, they call it search within. And that's going to be turf.polygon. And this one, I will hope that uh, it also will come through as easily. So layer.feature.geometry.coordinates. And if we're lucky, it'll just all work out nicely. And we will have this points within directly. Since we've named the variables the same, we can just use it. And this time we'll say after the end here, we'll have another little bit of detail. And a little bit of a not last number there beside it, saying how many are in the country when we mouse over them. All right, let's see if it works and what bugs we, we run into here. So right now, nothing. OK, we need to advance the toggle out. Now as so we mouse over, we get nothing, so there must be an error. So again, with turf, um, sometimes depending on how your polygon is formatted, you may run into an issue with this uh, polygon thing. So why don't we take a look at our coordinates so we know just what we have to do to make this particular set of coordinates fit. So if we mouse over, da-da-da, okay. Looked okay there maybe for a second. This one didn't get an error. But uh, some other ones got errors, so this seems like strange. So there's, the thing is, is that there are multi-polygons and polygons, and it's a little confusing when you're starting, because some of these are a whole bunch of arrays of coordinates, whereas others are just one straight length of coordinates. And that depends on a couple things with the data. You can look up, you know, uh, polygons and multi-polygons. Uh, but... Basically, you just have to know that this isn't always going to format the way you want. Here, this one, you can see it didn't get an error after, and that's because it formatted kind of how we want it. So this is a little bit confusing, a little unfortunate, but we have to find a way to make Turf Polygon work with this. So one way that I've done this, and I don't know if there is a more ideal way, but I would say, you know, if the arrays have this length of one, as you can see, here, each of these subarrays have a length of 1. That's an OK check. We can use that. You can see here, none of them have a length of 1. They all have a 2. So maybe here we can say, OK, if layer.feature.0, if the first item in the array has a length that equals 1, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to loop over this even more. Function chords. Okay, well, that's all right. And now we have we have a little bit of a tricky situation going on here, where we have to 
now have the search within um, happen, and it's going to take our coordinates. And then we're also going to have to make sure that the points within is the right number. So I'd say maybe var total points equals zero. So what I'm doing here is acknowledging that now I'm looping over each one of these, and each one of them is a little small polygon itself. Um, what we're going to, oh, sorry, what we're going to do here is once we find the points within, we're going to add them to the total points. And otherwise, what we'll be able to do is just go directly in the same way we had already done it. So we're going to have there, just like that. And after now, we're going to change points within to total points. So I'm kind of just running past this because I don't want to spend a ton of time getting into the JavaScript of it. But I wanted to show you this since it's a fairly common thing that people do, and a lot of time might not really know how to do. So let's see, we didn't get an error that time, so let's see our advanced toggle. So now we get a bunch of objects, so what's the big deal? Um, maybe we have to check out what points within looks like. Maybe we should look at our documentation. So points within, it, can, it returns a feature collection of those points. So what we really could do here is maybe say features.length. Okay, we'll just go with that. But you know what, I'm going to console log it anyway, just in case it's still an unexpected result. So uh, we have our advanced toggle. Oh, there we go. It's now working. That's pretty cool. So it seems to be counting correctly. Canada, we have these two. That looks right. And Mexico, two. Yeah, maybe up there. Colombia, zero. Brazil, okay. Peru, zero. Again, it's actually in Peru, but it's in the water, so it doesn't quite get in there. Argentina has this one. It's kind of cool. So, so now this is actually showing some interesting and somewhat useful, I don't know, for maybe someone, this might be useful information. So that gives us a little more sense of working from the map back uh, between that and the centering thing and our clicking here and being able to show detail. Again, doesn't show the number because we'd have to do this check down there. But, you know, we have this stuff. We could also have it center on bounds, for instance. Why don't we do that? That's a nice thing to, to be able to know as well, is when it actually finds the layer of our country GeoJSON, we're going to say map.fitboundslayer.getbounds. Let's try that. Let's see if we can make it, when we select a country, we just jump right to the country. No. It seems to be broken. So we just make sure that our bounds is not, is only when it finds it correctly. And let's see if that happens to work for us. Let's toggle out. Look at that. Goes right to Angola. Goes right to UAE. Cool. So this is now jumping on the, around on the map. The map is affecting this. We have sliders going on. We got live filters. We got toggles. We got all sorts of stuff going on. So I hope you feel like you learned enough to build the kind of map you want to build, at least on a fundamental level. And from now on, all the stuff I'm going to show you is just going to be different kinds of advanced topics, different kinds of things that people like to do. That's going to include some heat maps. It's going to include clustering. It's going to do a lot of, like, there's going to be some kind of custom icon stuff and just effects, animation. There's all kinds of things you can do in Leaflet. And I can't, be, can't make an exhaustive list, but I'm going to try to do at least, you know, four or five or six interesting different things that you do with maps commonly that you might find useful. So I hope all this working with the maps uh, back and forth and seeing me kind of code it out and make these kind of funny ways of doing filters has been helpful. Um, I'll, you'll get all this code available uh, as you need it. And uh, feel free to reuse it and change it around or maybe even make this map into something that's actually worth, uh, worth showing off. So uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next section where you're going to be doing much more advanced work.